The following contains images of graphic violence. Viewer discretion is advised. I do this. I do live here. 25 year old black man. You've probably heard about the tragic death of Kelly Thomas in early July 2011. Thomas was a 37-year-old schizophrenic drifter who was allegedly beaten to death by Fullerton, California police officers at this bus depot. There were probably at least six officers there trying to subdue Mr. Thomas, uh, having great difficulty in subduing him uh, while they were trying to take him into custody. But you may not be aware of how the story spread. The death of Kelly Thomas is a case study of how ubiquitous phones with cameras and the internet are transferring power from government, police, and the media to the masses. Now the story that might never have surfaced if someone hadn't picked up his home video camera. We already know how influential cameras can be on a police encounter from the 1991 Rodney King beating in Los Angeles. The three police officers facing felony criminal charges were among a group of 15 who stopped a 25-year-old black man last Saturday night, then beat him, kicked him, and clubbed him, unaware that an amateur photographer was recording the incident on videotape. I was actually living in the Los Angeles area in 1992 working for the FBI during the Rodney King uh, videotaped incident. Mike German is policy counsel for the American Civil Liberties Union in Washington and an expert on surveillance. I think what's changed is technology has developed so much so that we now carry cameras and, and or video recorders on our very person everywhere we go so it's very easy to immediately pull them up and take a, a, a video of whatever's happening. That's how this horrific video of the Kelly Thomas incident was recorded. But it didn't air on the nightly news right away like the Rodney King beating. In fact, Ron Thomas, Kelly's father, told us at the bus depot that after initial interest, the media stopped covering the story. Nothing was going on. Nobody wanted to pick it up. I tried to contact everybody. Nobody cared to do anything. But in the midst of his frustration, he made an important move at the hospital. Maybe a couple hours after being there and all of this is sinking in, I took some cell phone pictures. Don't know why I did it. Don't have a clue why I did it. I just felt compelled. I needed to take pictures. The former Orange County deputy captured a picture so horrific, it showed why the media should pay attention. So I released the picture of my son, and that got everybody's attention. And when the cell phone video came out, I released that. The audio had their attention again. You put the two together, the picture with the sound of what's happening is very, very compelling. So that The horrific video and picture came after the Fullerton police decided not to release any information. They will not say if they tased him since it's under investigation and so far cannot comment on whether excessive force was used. We're going to conduct a thorough investigation and uh, if, if there were any actions that, that weren't justified then, then that will come out in that investigation. The Kelly Thomas case seems to be a case study for what public information officers and what law enforcement agencies should not do. Jarrett Lovell is a criminologist at California State University, Fullerton. The police didn't release any information. They have not gone public with the, their facts of the case. They haven't released the names of the officers. What we've seen since the event is everybody commenting on the Kelly Thomas case but the Fullerton police. Lovell has written about the importance of public information in his book, Good Cop, Bad Cop, Mass Media and the Cycle of Police Reform. Public information is essential so that people can keep check on government. This is Sergeant Andrew Goodrich. He's the public information officer for the Fullerton police. In the Kelly Thomas case, it appears that the Fullerton public information officer ceased to be a public information officer and simply has been a public relations officer for the Fullerton police. That being said, not a very good public relations officer for the Fullerton police because without releasing any information, it makes the agency look like it has something to hide. We asked Sergeant Goodrich to come on camera and talk about his role in providing information, but he declined our request. I believe the fact that the victim's father, Ron, Ron Thomas, was able to release information before the public information officer from the Fullerton Department shows this shift in political power at the local level from police to the citizenry. 
so citizens can be the media themselves. So now people who, who are videotaping these incidents can make their own editorial decisions and put that information out into the, the community and let the community decide whether it's worthwhile and something that needs. So when Ron Thomas released the photo and video, the community erupted. The game's over. We're here to tell you, the game's over, and you're gonna start doing what we say now. Yeah. City council meetings have been packed with outraged citizens, and hundreds of people show up to rally outside the Fullerton Police Department. We're here to stop Fullerton Police from more brutality. Why do we want it? Eventually, the story hit the national and even international news. This next story started out with a video posted on YouTube. I have to warn you, the picture I'm about to show you is very graphic. The brutal death of a homeless man is sparking outrage in the city of Fullerton. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? It? No! It's just as wrong with or without the picture. Justice! But sometimes a picture helps people kind of realize what happened. Even people at the rally outside the police department told us what an effect the Kelly Thomas images had on them. You actually hear him calling out for his dad. It definitely did something to my heart hearing and seeing that. The video is definitely a great tool. I, you know, I think everybody should always be recording. Not just video, but internet. It's everywhere. And we don't have to wait for the news to put it out, so. You really don't need the media anymore. You now have YouTube, you now have Facebook, you now have social media. It really shows that distribution of power away from authority, in this case away from police authority, and to the average citizen to hold elected officials and to hold government agents like the police accountable. The cell phone video has helped us a lot and this technology is amazing and now they just, you know, they're not going to be able to get away with what they used to be able to get away with because of the technology. Now they're under the watch of us and we're going to video them for everything. Even if residents have cameras, someone was still inexplicably lost. And even if there are visual images to keep the police accountable for what happened at this bus depot, those images won't ever escape Ron Thomas. Listen to my son, beg those officers, please, please, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then the last words of his life, Dad, Dad. I want you to hear that the rest of your life like I will. <laughs>